So the next stage I'll uh, get on with building the phase shift network, which appears uh, in this portion of the schematic. Um, I've got out the components here uh, for the phase shift network, and as you can see, it's a pile of resistors, a couple of caps, well, four caps, uh, two uh, uh, multi-turn pots. Now, in the kit, it's important to get, these are the 50K versions. So there's two 50K pots and a single 500 ohm pot. Um, so these two are the 50K pots. Um, and interestingly, one of the things that you uh, do have to have um, if you're going to build your own phase shift network, and there's, there's a, a couple out there on the internet with various, uh, uh, you know, various values, the resistors and capacitors need to be fairly high tolerance uh, resistors and capacitors. So in this case, these are 1% resistors, and I believe these are 2% capacitors. Uh, in any case, they need to be... Uh, as close to the actual values as, as you possibly can. So, uh, just swinging over onto, uh, onto the board itself. Let's move the board into view here. Um, and then panning up, get the light out of the way, wrong way. So the, uh, the two, um, there's two op amps that go into this, an IC6 and IC7. And you can see here's IC7 here, here's IC6 here. And uh, after that, we'll only have one more op amp to install. But so the uh, phase shift network goes here and here. The uh, multi-turn pots between them uh, go here and here. So these are the two uh, uh, 50K pots. Um, and uh, in order to test this, like I said, uh, just moving back to the schematic again, um, what I will do is... I will inject um, two signals here at the audio baseband, both um, at 90 degrees of out of phase with each other. And then what we should see at the output here, here and here, is this is the I path. That should remain unchanged. Um, and then in the Q path, we should see that change by 90 degrees. So that's the purpose of the phase shift network, is to shift back the uh, Q signal by a further 90 degrees. So that's what we should see. And then when I've, when I've completed that, um, what I can do is um, connect this 500 ohm pot in here. And we're, that what we should see on the output of this is we should actually see that sideband suppression. But anyway, that's to come. I won't spoil too much of that. So the phase shift network is uh, put together and just quickly walking through on the board the various, uh, the various components. It consists of two op amps, IC6 and IC7, obviously some associated capacitors and resistors, and then three multi-turn pots. These two are both 500K, uh, sorry, 50K pots. Note the orientation of the screws, they're towards the top of the board. And this is uh, a 500 ohm pot, note the orientation of the screw, it's to the bottom. So the two 50K pots control the phase of the Q signal through the phase shift network. And this one controls the balance uh, between the I and the Q signal. So in other words, as you adjust this, you get either more of the I signal, less of the Q, or vice versa. So quickly going through my test setup. Um, I mean, obviously the, uh, the topic of phase shift networks is a deep one and uh, one I'm not entirely qualified to speak on, I'll be, I'll be honest. But let me walk through the test setup that I have here. And, and the goal of this test setup is to simulate either an upper or lower side band signal being received. And so to simulate an upper, upper side band signal, I'm injecting in from channel 1 of the signal generator, a 700 hertz signal. And then channel 2, I'm injecting a, the same frequency but offset by 90 degrees. So this simulates a, an upper sideband signal, and hopefully we'll see the results of that when we, uh, when, when we actually uh, sample the output. So the 700 hertz signal flows through from pin one of IC5, and just let me show you on the board where I'm injecting that. So here's, our, here's the socket for IC5 here. Pin one is the I signal going to the phase shift network. Pin two is the Q signal going to the phase shift network. So I'm just using the socket here. It's just a handy uh, injection point on the circuit. And just to show you where that is on the actual schematic, 
if I can move the uh, the rat's nest, please please excuse me here. Got a lot of wires going on here. So here's the I portion. There's pin one of IC five, and here's the Q portion, pin seven of IC five. So moving back to the uh, to the diagram here. Both of those signals enter the phase shift network. Now the I signal flows through and then the, the phase shift network is configured as an all pass network. It passes through basically untouched through the phase shift network. The Q signal gets a further shift back of 90 degrees in order to do the unwanted sideband um, removal. And then I'm sampling at the output of R19 and R26 the resulting I signal and the, phase, and the further phase shifted Q signal so that you can see the actual results. So if we have a look at the actual results up on the oscilloscope, you can see there. So the signals are originally the Q signal, which is the purple signal. It was originally 90 degrees out of phase with the I signal. You can see now that it's perfectly in phase and reinforcing the I signal. So when we add those two signals together, you'll get uh, the output, um, uh, 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 the actual audio signal that, that is represented by the, by the upper sideband. Now, similarly, I'll just shift back the Q signal back to 90 degrees trailing the I signal, and you can see that now they're exactly antiphase. So when those two signals are added together, they would basically cancel out. So now I'm simulating uh, the injection of a lower sideband signal, and you can so you can see that they're cancelled out. The best way to uh, to hear this is uh, best way to understand this is to actually hear it. So let's let's turn the speaker on. And let me first go to, I'm going to have to uh, turn the volume up a little bit here. So that's um, the lower side down that you can just hear. So let me turn the volume right up. So you can just hear that lower side band signal. Now let me change the phase of the Q signal. So now it is exactly 90 degrees uh, offset from the I signal, simulating an upper sideband signal. And you can hear the result is much louder. So let me just compare that again, go back to 270 degrees. Hardly noticeable, back to 90 degrees. And you can actually hear the signal. Now, one of the other things that the um, phase shift network comes with is the ability that the pots basically give you the ability to not only adjust the phase, but the um, balance between those, those two signals. So let me just show, demonstrate. I'll go back to the, uh, I'll go back to the lower side down, simulated lower side down. So you can see, you can barely hear it. Let me turn the volume up a bit. And as I adjust the phase of the Q signal, you should hear the volume increase as the lower sideband suppression becomes less effective. So adjusting, adjusting. You can see the trace very slowly it is, move. So now you can see, you can hear it's louder, and you can see that the two traces are now no longer 180 degrees offset from one another. So let me adjust that back again. And I'll be quiet and you'll be able to hear this, the volume diminish. And then you can hear almost to nothing. 
So that's basically, and the, the, the kit itself comes with some, as I mentioned before, some inbuilt uh, signal generation software, uh, all packaged onto the, uh, onto the App Mega that actually does this for you. So as you go through the setup of the radio, you will adjust the, um, uh, you'll adjust for IQ balance, you'll adjust for the phase shift at higher and lower frequencies. Um, I mean, this receiver, um, as we saw in the earlier one, um, it actually uh, has a bandpass filter around 700 hertz. And so really you're only gonna be hearing between 600 and 800 hertz, roughly. Um, but one of the things about these phase shift filters is you change the frequency, it alters the, uh, it alters the actual phase shift. So you might go from instead of 90, a complete 90 degree sh phase shift, you might go to 91 degrees or 89 degrees. And obviously that uh, reduces the, um, uh, the ability of the phase shift network to cancel out the unwanted high band. So you can hear all this, I and mean, that basically demonstrates the, res the audio path from the phase shift network where I'm injecting the signals through to the, excuse the, uh, excuse the, uh, the wires here, through to the uh, CW filter, through to the final audio amplifier and into the, into the, uh, the speaker here. So that's uh, basically uh, uh, the entirety of the, um, uh, of the audio path completed. The next stage of the build will be to move further back in the uh, receive path and install this bandpass filter. And so we'll be doing some testing of the bandpass filter as well to see, uh, to see how that works, uh, isolated from the rest of the circuit. So anyway, that's, uh, that's that, more to come.